Deep walking gives you many opportunities to enjoy the game in multiple ways. From the very detailed fighting, to exploring the beautiful landscaping, or even fishing to come down from the rest of the world. There is no right way to play deep walking. You are telling your own story. As of lately, deep walking has skyrocketed in popularity and for new people that have just started, it might be hard to know what to do from the start and that is why this is Ayaku 3's starter guide, which will cover everything from the basics to more advanced things even older players might not have known. When entering deep walking for the first time, this screen will pop up. This is the character customization screen and here you can change your appearance, but there are also some other important things to think about, which is races, starting weapon, attune core attributes, boons and flaws, and lastly starting island. First of all is race. There are 10 different races which all have different abilities, so pause the video if you want to read about them. As you can see I got the Adret race which gives me a stat point every time I level up that I can use. More on that later. No race is better than the other, but you can reroll race for 150 robux if you would like to. Personally, I wouldn't recommend that. You can also reroll variant for free, which doesn't change anything except the color of the character. We will skip names, face, facial markings, as they are just cosmetics, and head over to starting weapons. There are three different starting weapons, which all have different speed and damage. The Silhouette is a light weapon, which means you can only use light weapons if you pick that one. As you can see, it hits much faster, and it also gives less damage than the other options. Next up, we have the Sword. It is the middle ground, as it does more damage than the Stiletto, but less damage than the Battle Axe. Same goes for the Speed. It's faster than the Battle Axe and slower than the Stiletto Knife. And lastly, we have the Battle Axe with the most damage but the slowest attack speed. All of them have their differences and I can't really tell you what you should pick. I would say go for the one you like, though I will say there are secrets you can unlock by having either one of them, like different fist styles if you pick light weapons, but you have to do your own research on that. Next up we have Attunements, which is the element you want to use. You get attacks and buffs from leveling up depending on what element you choose. This can't be changed until you die and pick random until you get it or unlock it later in game, so think carefully. All of them are pretty balanced but lightning and flame is classified as attack and ice and wind is classified as defense even though from my experience all of them can be used for both attack and defense. There is also one last option, none, that gives you no element but you will get combat attack from leveling up instead of element related attacks. There is also ways to unlock more than one element through different quests. Next we have core attributes and this is nothing really important because you can level up all of these stats in game which I will show later. If you hover over them you can see what they give you. Intelligence might be hard to understand but the Eder is like the bar you use for your mantra attacks which is the element related attacks and reservoir is the bar that generates the Eder bar. Willpower gives you more resistance to sanity which is a hidden time glass in the depths which I will explain later. Every race starts with 4 points on different attributes that you can't change, but you get an additional 13 points you're free to use on whatever you want. Boons and flaws are different abilities you can pick, but in return you have to pick a drawback. It's the same here, you can hover above them and see what they do. You can pick up to 2 flaws and in return get 2 boons. In my opinion, Autodidact is one of the best boons because you get an extra stat point every time you level up that you can use in a campfire on whatever you want. The second best in my opinion is Maverick which gives you more experience by doing things alone. Both of these are good for fast progression but it's up to you what you pick. The best flaws to pick is obvious which decreases your stealth but honestly stealth is useless anyway and you can just level up that through agility. Vegetarian is a good option but on some island that will complicate things as they just have meat. Many people also recommend picking Haemophilia that makes you bleed more but I personally like the vegetarian option more to not draw back my fighting abilities. Lastly we have starting island where there is two options. Etria is a bigger starting island which gives you more options and money when you start off. But Isle of Vigilis has a training place where you can level up fast at the start. I would recommend Etria if you're completely new because it's easier to start off there. So now we have completed the character customization screen and we will be headed to the starting island. So just go ahead and click finalize character. 
When you first spawn you will notice that you also spawn with two different items, the weapon you picked but also a training gear depending on what stat you had the most points on. I had the most points on agility which gave me the ankle weight. I will later explain how you level up everything but first I'll show you around the island. If you look at the bottom right you will see a zero, this is your money so first we will have to get some money and that you can do at this guy which will explain how you ended up here. And if you click how can I earn some money there will be an option that is would you be able to spare me some cash and if you click that he's gonna give you 25 notes which is the currency they are using retrace my steps to the next place you should go and if you happen to pick the other island you will have to figure out everything on your own this guy is the next place you want to go and if you listen to his story he will actually give you a golden ring which is nothing special as you can get it from drops later and actually what we're going to do is sell this so follow me we're heading towards the antiquarian where you sell loot for notes just sell the ring by talking to him then hover over over the item and click sell one. At the antiquarian you can also buy different training gears that I will cover later. Now we are going to buy everything that is necessary before we head out to the first island. The first place you want to go is the mantra store. The mantra orb is used for training your attunement like the power you have. So you need different orbs for different attunements. So if you have frost rub, buy this one. If you have thunder call, buy this one. If you have gale breath, buy this one. And lastly, if you have flame charm, buy this one. Next up, we're going to the library to buy the weapon manual that you use for leveling up your weapon ability. Here you can also buy two other books for two different attributes to level. To not make this video too long, I'll show you some other places in the town that is helpful, but I won't show you the way to it because it would take too long. I know it's hard to navigate everything at the start, but that is something you have to learn. One important thing is the blacksmith. It's here where you can craft armor. He sells starter armor himself, but to get better armor you need to find schematics and then turn them into him. If you wonder where you can get cloth, which is needed for almost all armors, you can do it here and actually if you talk to this guy first, you will get the discount forever, so instead of paying 6 notes, it will only cost 3 notes. I forgot to mention one thing about the inn where you spawn every time you die. There are multiple islands with inns and if you actually talk to the owner you can purchase a room which means that you will spawn on that island scene so if you pick the other starter island you can change your spawn point to this island by talking to this guy if you play for a bit you might find yourself in need of a better weapon which you can get in the weaponary but they also sell shields and bullets for guns that you can find later the general sells all stuff that is general such as flint which is very important because you use that to light the campfire but they also sell stuff you can craft with and also tools for mining and cutting trees. This thing is a crafting table you stand close to it and open your inventory then you can craft up here. Lance food is a place where you can buy overpriced food but if you feel rich go ahead but it's much cheaper to make your own. The guild house is where you can create a guild, you need a minimum power of level 15 for that, guilds is nothing special but they can help you separate friends from enemies. If you talk to this guy you will receive a free axe, you can also sell 10 witch for 5 notes to him but it's not really worth it as there are better ways to earn money. If you ever get in trouble with the guards you can pay this guy some notes and your name will be cleared. Now we are pretty much ready to go to the first island and start leveling, so just follow this path. Be careful because this is both a PvP and PvE game, so don't trust anyone you meet. They could kill you any second and it happens a lot as the game implies. When you get down here there is actually a well so if you are thirsty which you can see down left on the screen you can drink out of this, they can be found on every island and it's an easy way to get up your thirst. One more thing before you go you should pick up some food because it is necessary for the island we are going to because there are barely any food there. You can pick both fruits and mushrooms because mushrooms can actually be crafted into mushroom soups at the campfire. To spawn your boat we want to go to this guy and just click build and choose dinghy. There are more options of boats that will favor you later but they cost notes. Your boat spawns in the water down here so just swim to it and press E. We are heading to an island called Eresia so just follow my path or just look at this map and feel free to screenshot it as it will be handy later. What we're driving through now is a gate to like a highway, when you are in this area your boat moves much faster which is a great way to get to other islands faster.
and now we're here this is basically everything you need to know but if you want to learn more about leveling combat and what you do after you die keep watching so around the island random events will happen just like these guys sitting by campfire running up to them and then getting noticed will make them attack you so there are three main components to combat attacking parrying and blocking you want to attack when you find an opening and when you see them swinging with their sword you want to press F quickly to parry their attack and avoid them hitting you. Lastly we have blocking which is a last resort you can hold F to block their attacks but your posture bar will start breaking and at last you will be block broken which leads them to get free hits on you. When you knock an enemy you need to execute them before they wake up again by clicking B on them and when that is done you receive your XP. When knocking an enemy you will also receive back some health so that is great so you don't die directly. Some enemies are stronger like the one with a white shirt is both better at parrying and has more HP but there is actually a trick if they are too hard for you. So what you wanna do is crouch behind them and click once which will finish off the weaker one directly but when you do it to the stronger one you need to hit him first and then execute him. You know when you can execute him because your health bar will rise. You receive XP by killing either one of them, but when you kill all three, there will be a chest that spawns with some loot, but in some events, no chest spawns. This chest contains everything from minerals to armor and schematics, you'll have to find out yourself what you can get from the chest. If you're still low after a fight, you can go to a campfire, which will heal you. Or if there is no campfire, you can build it with three sticks and ignite it with flint. Something that I haven't talked about yet is the blood bar which is this bar, when you fight and get hit you will lose blood and when the bar hits zero you will take damage every 15 seconds, so to generate this bar you just need to sit by a campfire. The campfire is also the place you can check what armor you got on you and their ability and it's also here you can unequip armor. In the campfire you can also check talents which you get from leveling up but also mantras which is like your flame attacks and everything. You can also see your overall stats at a campfire. Now comes the pretty confusing part that is leveling. When you kill people you will earn XP, I think you get XP from other stuff as well but the main thing is fighting, the XP is the party as you see. With the XP you get you can use your tools like the ankle weights I have and that XP will go to the ankle weights which leads to agility being leveled up. But how do I level up my power? You need to level up your attributes 5 times that the 5 investment points indicate. After that your power will be increased. So to simplify things there is a hidden XP bar and when you kill people the bar will rise then when you use your tools the XP bar will go down. When the XP bar hits 0 it says I've learned what I can from training right now I should put it into practice. When this happens just earn more XP and it will work later. You will have to figure out yourself what training gear levels up what attribute, I'll just say weapon manual increases weapons and the orb you bought increases your mantra power. Of course everything that you level up will be improved, for example agility which will make you climb higher. But you also get benefits from powering up like talents which is different abilities, the abilities can be different from person to person because the more you level for example fortitude, the more fortitude related talents you get. At some levels you also get mantra cards that make you able to use for example your frost straw. When you're done leveling and need food or buying new training gear there is actually a trick, you can reset your character every 3 hours which doesn't take away any of your life. As I mentioned before you can sell your loot at the antiquarian and now you have money to spend on whatever you want. But what happens if you die? First of all you will get knocked when your HP bar hits 0. You can get back up after a timer but if the enemy executes you, you will die and now you will have a stained health bar which indicates that you only have one life left. To get back to a normal health bar the only thing you need to do is power up once. But when you die with a stained health bar you will actually go to a place called the deaths. Here you can either level for a bit and then escape or just escape directly. You want to be careful in the deaths because if you die here you die forever. As I mentioned before, there is a hidden time glass in the depths which is sanity and when that reaches zero you will die so don't stay in the depths too long. So the way to escape is to find this huge wall and then you wanna follow it until you find the entrance. Now we want to find a special house that is high enough to jump on the wall. When looking for the house be careful of the seekers because if they see you they are actually gonna spawn angels on you and they are pretty hard for a new player. If you happen to be spotted just run away until you are out of danger. The walls is divided in 4 districts so it's pretty hard to find the right house but it's in the Varicosa district. Then just climb up to the house and jump on the wall. Run towards the middle until you find a place you can 
jump down, enter the tower and go to this platform here, when you stand on it press E on the lever and it's going to start moving. When you are up here a guy is going to start talking, at a low level you don't need to do anything but when you get a higher level you must actually fight something. When you escape you're going to get a nice talent and your health bar will be reset to normal. But what happens if you die in the depths? Simple answer is that you die forever. First you will go to this place and here you can actually buy yourself out for 1000 robux but it's not worth it. One tip here is to go to this place where you can actually offer down things to your next life which is something great. To restart your character you need to talk to this guy and then you die and get back to the character customization screen. This was pretty much everything you need to know or even more and if you have any questions I would gladly answer them in the comments. See ya!